the most disturbing body cam moments of all time. When police respond to incidents involving firearms, oh the only way to play it is by the book. And this is where 911 calls come in, allowing officers to plan ahead. And what you hear? I hear a gunshot and I hear a female crying and screaming. I hear crying and screaming. But sometimes the very same calls can make a situation far worse than it needs to be. Hey, show me your hand! Show me your hand! Show me your hand! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Here are four 911 calls that left dispatchers speechless, starting with an abusive husband who might not be as dangerous as police were led to believe. It was December 1st, 2023 in Lansing, Michigan, when dispatch received an urgent call, a woman being abused by her husband on the 1600 block of Massachusetts Avenue. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Um, Massachusetts Avenue. Massachusetts Avenue? Yes, Lansing, Michigan. Perfect, and then your name? Can you tell me exactly what happened? Uh, my hum my husband's really drunk, and he just slapped me across my face, and he's just really super drunk, and he's getting violent. Okay, did he have any weapons on him? Um, uh -oh. He did, but he uh, threw it in the car, so it's, I have it. What did he she use it. or have? Um, he has a uh, gun. While the responding officers were on their way to the scene, another 911 call came in from a neighbor, and it appeared the situation had gotten much worse. Ingham County 911, what's the location of your emergency? Massachusetts. You said Massachusetts? Yes. And what'd you hear? I hear a gunshot, and I hear a female crying and screaming. I hear crying and screaming. How many gunshots did you hear? One. Massachusetts, additional units and command for information. Massachusetts have another caller who said they heard a single gunshot and now hear a female crying. In the front room by the door, and I hear a female crying, the neighbors, and she just came out like 10 minutes ago and he was going crazy about his baby mama female who And then I hear her crying and screaming. So I don't know what's going on. I need to get over here. Yo. But I got my door closed because it's outside now. I don't know. Are they all outside? No. She has that too. She shot her. Yeah, he yeah, shot what? her. I said he shot her. I'm about the front door, but my son was in the bathroom. And he, she's saying that he shot her. Priority update. Uh, sounds like the female has been shot. This is going to be a confirmed shooting. We'll get LFD and route. What do you see? What do you see? I don't see shit. I got my door closed. I don't want to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to get shot. I got out. You got out. I got that smart girl. I, no, I'll be the same. No, she's not wrong. I'm just fighting funny, man. Bro, <laughs> I got that. You go out, man. That's what I'm calling for. What do you see? What do you see? <laughs> I don't see shit. I got my door closed. I don't want to get shot. The husband no, in question was Stephen, and as far as police know, he had shot his wife, Ashley, or at least fired a weapon, according to the neighbor. So when officers arrived on the scene, they were prepared for the worst. Right. 34, girl. Why do I feel like it's going to be a twist? Supposed to be in the driveway. As far as we know, she was out front, no one was over, we don't know a current location. There's gonna be a twist in there. Yo, look at this badass gun, bro. He's ready for hey, war. Show me your hand! That's Steven in the driveway, and considering his situation, officers should be starting a series of de-escalation techniques. Oh. These include speaking calmly and with He's the right the tone body. and use of words, ensuring your body language is relaxed and in control, making a connection and being empathetic with people, and getting the agitated person away from weapons and other people. It was only two years earlier that Michigan State voted to make de-escalation training a requirement, with retraining to be done on a yearly basis. However, what the officers would go on to do could be called anything but de-escalation. Show me your hand! Right, show me your hand! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! I will shoot you! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! At this point, oh! the body cam footage ends, and it. what you can't see is the two officers firing a total of 14 bullets at Steven, with six of them hitting the target. As Steven lifted his shirt, his- Wait, how do you fire 14 bullets from this distance and only hit six? Oh, sh why did he go to grab his gun now? Yo!
His firearm was visibly holstered on the side of his oh, pants. Get... However, there are oh. many who argue that this was an attempt to let officers know that he was armed or that Stephen was trying yeah, to it disarm was. himself. It was. Either way, public opinion states that he did not pose a direct threat. I'm... No, like, I, I agree with him showing the gun. Like, yeah, that, that that's good. But why did he reach for it, bro? Why? disarm himself. Either way, public opinion states that he did not pose a direct threat. Unfortunately, this tragedy would have been completely avoidable if dispatchers had informed officers about a third 911 call that they received, this time from Ashley's children. 911, oh. what is the location of your emergency? Um, this is Avenue. Is this no, this is my daughter. What's oh, going I don't on? Like this. Is she hurt? <laughs> Yes, my stepdad slapped her. Um, we can hear him more. Did you shoot her? No, but he shot a gun to scare her. This call was received the moment officers arrived on the scene. While the dispatcher attempted to ensure the children's safety, he never told officers that Stephen had never even shot his wife. This crucial piece of wow. information could have easily saved his life and made a difference between these kids having a father or not. Tragically, wow. Stephen wouldn't survive this ordeal. To make things worse, the- Well, no, wait, are you kidding me? Being a father or not. Tragically- Are you kidding me? You shoot him 14 times and you try to bring him back to life. Fourteen times. They have to, but fourteen times. Fourteen. Stephen wouldn't survive this ordeal. To make things worse, the majority of the footage released by police has been heavily edited and doesn't show what really happened. Stephen's uh? family claims he was confused by the conflicting orders of the officers and was wrongfully killed. They filed a lawsuit against Lansing police for $100 million in a case that has yet to be resolved as of December 2023. Fortunately, though, this next case did reach its... Wait, I want to know what happened. Bro, I don't understand, like, even if he was reaching for his gun, right? 14 times is crazy, bro. Surely one shot in the leg will stop him. Do you know what I'm saying? 14 times is crazy. I don't know, bro. I don't know. But the weapon he had, he just sprayed it. Yikes. Bro, that gave me some that gave me anxiety him reaching for his gun because I knew he was like the reason why he showed it, you know he wanted to put it on the ground. Do you know what I'm saying? You you like I feel so bad because he wanted to disarm himself and he shot him 14 times, bro. That's crazy, man. End and showed us just how devastating a simple mistake can be. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, was it trying to do that? I, just, I, think, I can't breathe correctly because. Uh, uh. 23 year old Elijah was an introvert minding his own business while walking home from a store on August 24th, 2019. That was until someone who had taken a disliking to him called the cops, resulting in him being confronted by officers. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. So there's, a, so there's a guy, he has a, he's walking, what's the opposite of north? South. South? South, yeah, he's walking south on Billy Street, <laughs> he has a mask on. Wait, wait, oh, oh. wait, what's the opposite of north? What? <laughs> okay. And then, and then when I passed by him, he puts, he puts his hands up and does all these kinds of signs. I don't know, he's... He looks good to you. I mean, he might be okay. a good person or a bad person. Yeah. All right, good right call. Now, Fair enough. Like, I just turned around and he's like putting his hands up. Okay. Don't approach him, okay? If you need to, just drive away. I don't want you to go near him. Were any weapons involved or mentioned? No. Okay. I already have a call in, okay? I need to get his full description. What race is he? I think he's a, a black male. Okay. Um, how old does he look? I know he's wearing a mask. I have no clue. 
Okay, what color is the mask or what does it look like? Black. Black mask. Is it like a ski mask or what type of mask is it? It looks like yeah, a ski mask. Like a ski mask. Okay, and then what else is he wearing? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's that color, like a brown long suit shirt. Or, okay. And then it might be cold shirt. out. Left hand. Okay, um, give me one moment. I'm just adding notes. Are you or anyone else in danger right now? Elijah was wearing a ski mask because he suffered from poor circulation and had to wear extra clothing to remain warm. Police oh, could have really? easily found this out if they had asked. Instead, they went in heavy handed and it didn't take long for the scene to turn ugly. Do a favor, stop right there. Hey, stop right there. Stop. 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 I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. Well, okay. Turn around. No, Turn around. Hands, Turn around. Stop. Stop tensing up, dude. Stop, Stop tensing up, bro. Let go of me. Stop tensing up. Well. No, I am an introvert. Please Stop respect the up. boundaries that I am to. speaking. Stop Relax. tensing up. Stop. Relax. Stop. I'm going home. Relax or I'm going to have to change this situation. Dude, hey. Stop. Leave me Relax. alone. Sir, can you please... No, we don't want to do this, all right? Leave me alone. No, we're going to First we're off, you, you guys started to arrest me, and I was stopping my music to listen. Now let go of me. You know, with a... Get over the grass. Okay. We're gonna lay you down. Okay. Come on. Give us more. Give us more. We're fighting them. Stop, huh? dude. You got him. Stop, dude. All right, we got his arms. We got his arms. You want them? Yep. We got his arms. Okay. Dude, just stop fighting. Taser, taser, taser. In a second. You're gonna get tased in a second. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. You're gonna get tased. The officers claim that Elijah reached for one of their guns, but this was never seen on the body cam footage. What's more worrying is that each of the three officers who were at the scene claim their body cams fell off in the struggle, which is not impossible, but seems extremely convenient. Uh, uh, stop. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to do that. I, just, I, I can't breathe correctly because. Uh, uh. Move your camera, dude. No, he went for his gun. Oh, my God. You might have missed it, but one of the cops holding Elijah down just told his colleague to leave his camera. This leads us to one question. If the officers really thought he broke the law, why try to tamper with the footage? Additionally, you can hear Elijah saying he can't breathe properly, and that's because the officer has applied a cardioid control hold, which is used to cut off blood flow to the brain by compressing the cardioid arteries in the neck. This can render a person unconscious, just like in the case of Elijah. Got to throw up, dude? Yeah. Throw up right there, okay? Don't throw up on me, though. And I don't think he went out, dude. He was he like halfway, I think. But hey, dude, relax. I think he's trying to pee. Oh, okay. Get it out, dude. Anything? No, he was. We got called to a, sus a suspo. He was out here walking around with a ski mask on, and then uh, we contacted him. Green. Have, uh, he's wearing a ski mask. He started to kind of like walk away from us. So these two wrap him up, and then in the midst of them wrapping him up, pushing him against the wall right here, he reached for Rosie's gun, dude. So. Oh, don't get up, dude. It's not gonna be good for you. I'm telling you right now. If you keep bro, the thing that's crazy about this is the fact that they're telling each other to like not record on their cameras, bro. That 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 shouldn't just be allowed. Like, if a cop does that or says that or is caught saying that, they should lose their job instantly, bro. Why? Why in any situation should you not be recording? Do you know what I mean? In any situation, bro. Mess around, we'll put, I'm bring my dog out. He's gonna dog bite you. You understand me? Keep messing around. That's one of the officers threatening to let his police dog loose on Elijah. As more officers arrive, another officer gives his alibi. However, there would be a huge discrepancy between his words and what body cameras just recorded. Don't do it, dude. Relax, bro. Come Chill on. Out. What really is he doing? Relax. No, no. When we try to stop him, he. But he's. Definitely okay. Ow. okay, okay. Stop, dude. Well, chill out. You've already been told several times to stop. I can't sit. Stop doing what? He's on the fucking ground doing nothing. What is he doing? Am I? Am I lost? What is he doing? Ow. He's not yeah. doing nothing. Dude, uh, chill out. He's got a mask on his face. That's kind of weird. Nothing really criminal. My officers go to make contact with him. He starts acting crazy. And, uh, they come oh. and they attack him. Stop, uh, please. And actually well, stop fighting, was stop fighting us. Stop fighting us. I'm trying. They put him out. They were able to get him out of handcuffs. We're still struggling with him. We have a fire on scene. And that's where we're at. I just want to let you know, yeah, okay, we did that. Can you know why tonight? So. And just one other thing. We did have an officer get... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all so his, dude. That's what he was wearing. Okay. Was used. Okay. It was very minor. minor. Whatever he's okay. on, right. yeah. he has incredible strength. Yeah, crazy strength. I had him in a bar hammer behind his back. Yeah. 
and his arm was above his head and he was still fighting. Oh, fighting. So he's walking away from us and he Okay, yo, it don't take a genius to know that these cops can't restrain this guy. He has crazy strength. Bro, he's not Superman. You're like twice the size of him and there's three of you, four of you. I, I, are you actually taking the piss? Are they, bro? And he was still fighting. Just still fighting. So he's walking away from us and he, he did this thing. We're like, hey, dude, this is not a big deal. Just relax. And we, we sat there for a good 30 seconds just trying to calm down. We're like, dude, hey, not a big deal. We just, we need to talk to you. He kept doing this and he kept saying things that didn't make that. sense. I try, I'm like, hey, bring him over the grass. So if we do have to take him down, we can take him down the grass. I didn't not see by, that. Right here by the rocks. Um, and then he starts going even crazier. So we get him cornered against the wall. What's he doing when he's acting crazy? He's, he's like saying stuff and he's holding his arms in and he's like, I, I, I don't remember exactly what he was saying right now, but just acting really strange. Randy! You need a re relief, buddy? Randy, you need a relief? No, I'm good. I'm just going to pat him down. Make sure and then over there, Brody tells me to try to grab my gun. So we pull him down. What, while he's... While you... Yeah, so he pulls his arm free and comes out and... So that guy, who is very small, half the size of one of those cops, has managed to get his arm out from three cops and reach for a gun. Sure, buddy. Sure. Sure, buddy. Um, I don't remember feeling it because I was focused on sure. him. But he said, like, you're trying to grab a gun. So I'm like, okay. So he comes down and... No. no. He just thought it was weird because he was wearing a mask. I initially tried and then his... I was in a bad position. I didn't want to hurt his neck. So I had to release because I was behind. I wasn't like... So you went to, you went to put it on? So it was more... It was like a... Almost like a schoolboy trying to get a product backwards wow, okay. because that was the only position I had. And then sure he can breathe. He can, he can breathe. Side. He can breathe. Okay. Just, All right. I just have his arm behind his back. I understand. While he was being restrained, Elijah lost consciousness, and paramedics gave him 500 milligrams shot of ketamine, but the recommended amount for a patient of this. Wait, what? The Wait, is the ketamine a drug? Is it ketamine what you give whole like? Wait, no, that's tranquilizer, horse tranquilizer. Can we? Oh, yeah, I really hope you don't die. And paramedics gave him 500 milligrams shot of ketamine, but the recommended amount for a patient of this size and body mass is only 320 milligrams. They estimated his weight at 220 pounds when he was in fact only 140. He never recovered from this use of excessive force and three days after this incident, his life support machine was turned oh. off. Two of the officers involved were acquitted of any charges, while the third was found guilty of criminally negligent homicide and third degree assault and is due to be sentenced in January 2024. The two paramedics argued they were only following their training but were found guilty of criminally negligent homicide and will also be sentenced in 2024. Giving out the wrong information during a 911 call can be disastrous so imagine doing it on purpose and putting thousands of lives at risk. Chat what do you think? That that, that they, they definitely should get sentenced manslaughter bro. 100%. Hundred percent. That's crazy. Oh man, I don't like this video, bro. This video is making me feel so bad. Fuck. That's crazy, bro. And you said this was at, shoot, they were threatening to shoot up OU? Yeah, they, the, the, the University of Oakland, yes, correct. Over the Easter weekend of 2023, the University of Oklahoma fell victim to several swatting calls that left the entire campus gripped in fear. However, wait, 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 why did they give him ketamine? Why would they give him a drug? I'm so confused. It's given by paramedics. Why did why did they give him ketamine? To calm him down. Oh, is it? Nah, bro, that guy didn't need calm like that guy, he was either on drugs or he was just really awkward. Like he seemed a bit like a bit different, you know what I'm saying? He didn't seem like he was going to do... He didn't seem off the chain, bro. He didn't seem... He said he was an introvert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 
no, he probably was a bit on the spectrum. I ain't gonna lie. Like, he, he didn't seem like dangerous. He just seemed awkward, bro. Like, no, that's crazy, bro. Poor guy. Of Oakland, yes, correct. Over the Easter weekend of 2023, the University of Oklahoma fell victim to several swatting calls that left the entire campus gripped in fear. However, not all SWAT calls are meant to be genuine. Fake reports of terrorists and criminals have become increasingly common in the US yeah, and can have true. terrifying consequences like causing mass panic. This is one of the main aims of these twisted fake SWAT calls. Norman Communications. Yes, hello. I just got home from work and my son has left me a note here saying yeah, hello. Good up, Hawk. Go Feels so bad. And shoot everybody. Then all my guns are gone. And wait, 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 what? Norman Communications. Yes, hello. I just got home from work and my son has left me a note here saying, Dad, I love you, but I have to go to the university and shoot everybody. What the fuck? all my guns are gone and everything's just like messy in the house. Okay. Uh, what's your location? I'm in my car right now, currently. I'm, I don't know if I should go to the school and try to stop him or what to do. Here. Yo, he sounds like a kid, bro, on the call. He sounds. He, I, I, he sounds a bit young. This is a fake call, isn't it? Fake swap. Okay, uh, when you got the message from them, where were you at? I was I was in my car. I got it over messages. I don't know if he's in the school at the moment or what to do here. And you said this was at, shoot, they were threatening to shoot up OU? Yeah, they, the, the, the university. The guy on the call sounds young. Yes, correct. Okay. And that's how swatting calls work. You can probably tell that the call seemed a little off, but the caller they very did. carefully avoiding the question of his location. And there's good reason for this. He's not even in Oklahoma. In fact, he's not even in the United States. As the call continues, he cleverly feeds the dispatcher the information he knows will cause the most direct response. Him and his friend. Do they live here in Norman? Yes. Do you know the address that they live at? No, I don't. And my two AR-15s are gone, and my handguns are gone as well, and all the ammunition, everything is just gone. And then more hoax calls start to come in. He's six foot tall, around six foot tall. Black coat and AR-15. These fake calls wouldn't end there, though, with callers even adding in special effects for extra realism. He's heading towards the library right now. When students caught sight of the SWAT team surrounding the campus, even more 911 calls started to come in, and this time, they were real. As mass panic begins to settle in, the situation starts becoming way too real. Physical science building with like 10 other girls. We've been taking shelter. My daughter has texted me. She is in hiding with several of her friends. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but the hoax callers got what they what wanted, the and the fuck? FBI are still investigating the case as of December 2023. Sadly, this next shooter was very real and his story would only end in bloodshed yo bro this fake call is so bad bro that is so bad yo they could they gotta find assistance to track these down bro and charge them they really do sadly this next shooter was very real and his story would only end in bloodshed <laughs> It started off as a welfare call from a concerned neighbor. I was just approached by an elderly gentleman uh, right outside of my apartment. Felt pretty threatening. Told me that, that he knows me and I'm going to prison. Uh, I told him I don't know him and he went and he like scuffled back into his apartment. I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's like a wellness check. I'm not trying to get shot by the old man. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that would be good. I don't really feel like dealing with this, but I also don't want to, like I said, get right. gunned down by some old dude. So. Okay. okay, well, I will go ahead and get an officer out there for you, okay? He was talking about his neighbor, Richard, who had been acting pretty strange. But in an even stranger turn of events, Richard would go on to call 911 himself. Huh? What is the address of your name? Come here. What the fuck? Okay, where is it? Where is your gun? Where is it? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm struggling to get everything you said. I ain't gonna lie. Good job he's got subtitles. The dispatcher had to make sure the guy. scene was safe for the approaching officers. Okay, we have units on scene there. They're gonna come and speak with you in a second, okay? Uh, I'm gonna wait till y'all get here for a more thing to happen. So I don't know if you know. All police know is that someone has complained about a confrontation with his neighbor and that the very same neighbor has also called 911 to report their phone being hacked. With all this information, officers know that the suspect is armed. Unluckily though, they have no idea what they're about to walk into. Bro, this is a weird situation, man. This is weird. Richard? Hey, it's the police department. Richard, this is Officer Doty from earlier. Hey, partner. Can you hear me? It's the police department. Don't come in there. What? what? Buddy, we don't want that. Yes, I'm the police. This is Officer Doty from earlier. I took your theft report. Or parked around the side. You took a theft report earlier for $3,000. Don't come in. Shut your car. I want to see the ladder. Don't come in, buddy. He's right there. Come in. I don't know you. I'm the shot. This bad. Yo, do you reckon the guy, bro, is the guy off his head? He has a peephole here, bro. He could just look through here and see it's the police. Is I'm trying to call you, answer the phone, they'll tell you it's us. He's crazy, bro. It's our dispatch. But how do you even deal with this in this situation? Like, you got a problem and an old guy in his house is saying, come in here and I'll blow your head off to the cops. Like, how do you even deal with that, bro? How do you even deal with that? Richard has just asked the officers to bring their patrol car around to the front and park it under his window since he's threatened to shoot them. Right. That's not going to happen as they will be putting themselves directly in his line of sight. But it's what one of the officers heard from behind the door that concerned him the most. The sound of a round of ammunition being loaded into the barrel of a gun. The uh -oh. cops back off and Richards decides uh -oh. to call 911 again. This is where things really start to get out of control. Uh -oh. uh, there's somebody coming to my door. They said it was the police. I know they're not the police. And he's officer here. Hey, is this Richard? Okay, the police are outside. They're at your door. They're in. I don't see him. I want to see the car. I want to see the lights on. Richard. Yo, yo, the police you're talking to is telling you it's the police at the door. Bro, bro, he's crazy. Oh my god, he's crazy. Oh my god, he's crazy. Oh my god, he's crazy. 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 They keep intercepting my call. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's lost his mind. Oh my god, he's lost his mind. Bro, how do you even deal with this situation? Because you don't want to go in there and shoot the old guy. You know what I'm saying? How do you even deal with this situation? How? How do you even deal with this? He's got a gun and he's crazy. You don't want to go in there and kill him just because he's crazy. But you can't. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Tell them when they pull up, put on the lights so I know it's the police. They're trying to come stay outdoors. They're trying to what? Life and death matter. Trigger, he he shouldn't be all. Yeah, how? Another 911 call came in from a different neighbor claiming they heard two gunshots. Another 911 call came in from a different neighbor claiming they heard two gunshots. EMTs and crisis negotiators were sent to help, but Richard had other ideas. And see oh, that's a good idea. Beth. Get the callers to give him a code word that the police at the door is going to say to him, I have the code word. That that could work. 
That could work. And shots. EMTs and crisis negotiators were sent to help, but Richard had other ideas and seemed utterly convinced that the police weren't actually police and were there to kill him. That oh might explain God. what he did next. Can you see that door from where you're at? The window that's open with the chain. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, can you see them? This is crazy. What'd you say, Hodge? Yeah, I'm gonna move to you, okay? Okay, cool. I'm using the edge cover, okay? Okay. With officers under fire, the situation is becoming dangerous, and it's not just the lives of the police officers that are at risk, as there are terrified Civilians. residents in the yeah. surrounding buildings, and an evacuation is impossible. A team is sent in to make contact, and although they are armed, they are using non-lethal weapons to subdue the suspect. In this case, wow. this includes the use of dogs, tasers, and a shot. Wow, they're really trying to do everything to dis 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 Bro, for everyone that says that all cops are bad, these are literally cops being shot at try to do everything they can to not kill this guy but disarm him bro this, this bro this is this is a hard this is a hard day at work bro this is a very hard day at work what they're going through right now this is a tough day. A gun armed with bean bags that can put a suspect out of action without causing any serious harm. However, before officers even get their chance to use these, Richard makes another 911 call. I wish you would, man. You know what I'm saying? See that one? There's a quick little light there. It's crazy white motherfucker. Come on, buddy. Oh, my God. Can you hear me? I need you to listen to me, Richard. When Richard called earlier in the night, he said he was a war veteran, and it sounds like he's having a serious mental health issue. Some of his neighbors spoke of strange encounters with him and suspected he might be suffering from some form of PTSD. This could be the reason the police are handling the incident with less lethal weapons, but this decision was made while Richard was firing a handgun and had little range. Now he's been spotted with a rifle is oh, becoming an even no. bigger danger. Because of this, SWAT is left with no choice but to take drastic action. I feel bad, bro, because I... The guy is giving the police no choice but to put him down. And I feel bad because he's just an old crazy man. But like, what can you do? Do you know what I'm saying? He's got a rifle shoot. Like, what, what can you do, bro? What can you do? This is, oh, I feel, I feel bad, but what can the police do, man? Even bigger danger. They try, because of everything. this, SWAT is left with no choice but to take drastic action. <laughs> Fuck. This was the sound of a shot being fired into the broken window of Richard's apartment after the decision was made to take down the suspect. However, it is difficult to get a visual on the suspect's state, and it is unknown whether Richard is dead or alive at this point. Richard, we don't know. Jeffersonville Police, if you can hear me, acknowledge me. Don't come out the door with any weapons. Richard Glass, if you can hear me, acknowledge this command. Richard Glass, Jeffersonville Police. Yeah, they got him. If you can hear me, call out. We want to get you medical help. Here to help you. Oh, I feel bad. When they do gain entry, they find the SWAT team had hit the target and Richard was dead. Indiana State Police are still investigating the case, but Jefferson Police defend their use of deadly force. Well, honestly, I, 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 this one, I don't think the cops did wrong. I don't think they, I feel bad for the guy, but like, what could they have done, bro? Do you know what I'm saying? The guy was shot. He had an he had an assault rifle firing outside the window. They didn't have to kill. No, but what could they have done? They tried. They tried non-lethal. They tried. 